Welcome to Mental Wealth, the podcast to invest in your mind. Here I will help you make sense of your mind and behaviours, giving you the tools to have your best life. There is so much to share, so let's get into this episode and explore another great topic. So welcome to episode 20. And in this episode, we're going to explore imposter syndrome. It might be just a phrase that you hear, or you might really resonate with it and you might know a bit more about it. You might yourself feel that you suffer. And I think the best way to do this is to bring somebody in who has got a lot of experience in this field, both with her clients and her own life, no doubt. I can certainly say that mine too. So I would love to welcome my very special friend, Denise Chilton, as my special guest in this episode. Hi, Denise. Hi, Alison. Thank you for inviting me. Lovely to see you. (laughs) It's always good to see you. So um, thanks for inviting me. Really pleased to be here today. Brilliant. So tell everyone a little bit about about you first. Um, Oh, gosh. Well, I'm very old, so I'm not really... We'll better make this short as it's a shortish podcast. So... um, so I'm a career life coach, leadership coach, do a lot of work in the leadership space. And I've been doing um, this work for about maybe about 15 years. So um, so when you kind of talked about imposter syndrome, it's something that comes up very often with clients that I work with um, and in organisations. So I think it's uh, it'd be quite nice to get underneath the surface to explore it in a bit more detail. I think so. And I think as is the often with these topics, when we talk about it, it helps people realize that they're not on their own, that lots of people do have these issues and we can then explore some, maybe some strategies. So I think it's really good for us to start with that more than that, actually, just thinking about the fact that we're not on our own, we are alone. And I know that Denise, you have shared with me before your thoughts on imposter syndrome and and who can it who can it affect? Well, I think that's a really good one. And I think there was some research done. Uh I think the phrase came from some research that started out um that was done on successful women. And um and actually uh what they realized that actually if you've got imposter syndrome, it can happen to anyone. And it happens very, very commonly to successful people so I always say to people I'm working with if you've got imposter syndrome you're likely to be very successful it's so funny (laughs) you say that isn't it the the opposite to what people think really they they challenge themselves so much with it yeah and I also think it's quite interesting that I think people maybe have a bit of a misconception about actually what it is Mm. so when we haven't done anything before or we're new to something it's really normal to get self-doubt and it impacts our confidence. And we think because we feel in a little bit, not very confident or we've got a bit of self-doubt, we think it's imposter syndrome. And the the real terminology of imposter syndrome is it's a consistent that's happened to you pretty much throughout your life in Mm. whichever jobs you've gone in. So I think, you know, like with any definitions and badges, we can sometimes take them on board and kind of go, well, actually, is this just normal self-doubt or is this something that's been with me a long time? I think that's really important to say that, isn't it? Because always on this podcast, particularly, I'm helping people understand a bit more about their minds. Mm. And and yeah, if you're in a new situation or a situation that last time was difficult, you are going to be having some thoughts, your mind might be screaming at you saying, don't do it, or you're not going to be able to do it. And it's normal, isn't it? And that's what we're saying to start with. Yeah. And I also think as well, if we've never done something before, the brain hasn't got a plan, has it? (laughs) Kind of goes to our little memory box and goes, well, I've never done that before. So I can't, you know, and so then we make up a great story about why we can't do it. So um, that's one of the questions I always ask when someone comes up against something that they've never done is like well what's the plan Hmm, I don't know yeah brilliant so our first starting point is to remember that if it's something different something new or maybe something that was difficult in the past there is going to be some level of questioning doubt uncertainty so we can look at how we can manage that 
But I think then we can move into the sort of deeper side of imposter syndrome and what it actually is and how it plays out. Because I, in my work, I see it play out in different ways. Some people are perfectionists, you know, they never complete, Mm -hmm. never feel happy about completing something. Some people uh, sort of live in that overwork place where they feel inadequate. So they just do more and more and more and more. Some people have that idea about goals and setting goals that are the bars just like up here somewhere, almost unachievable. Or maybe they just feel like they've got to find out absolutely everything so that they are an expert. Yeah, I think we're as human beings as well, we're really uncomfortable not being in control. I mean, we only have to look at the pandemic, don't we, to kind of go, we weren't really in control, you know, things happen don't they that have never happened before so um but I think that's another driver isn't it being in control so and that overwork and perfectionism can't can't make a mistake um and uh and what will people think those kind of shame drivers if you like yeah and I think one of the things that I'm always pushing people to think about is some of those behaviors don't have to be a problem you know if you like things to be done well well, it's not a problem. But what we're looking for is when it's out of that reach or yeah. I, I often use the word almost disabling, you know, so your need for perfection becomes disabling. Your need to overwork because you feel inadequate becomes a disabling feature. And I think for me, it's how you identify how far you've kind of gone or you're going. Yeah, and I, and I you know, sometimes as well in my work, I... I kind of hear that people are trying to prove themselves and prove that I'm worth it in this job. I'm proving that. And I'm like, well, simply by the fact you've got the job, (laughs) you know, they'll come up with 300 reasons why they, you know, well, perhaps no one applied or, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, you know, who knows why they got the job. And I said, well, have you ever thought that it might be because you're skilled and you've got the experience? maybe they hadn't thought about that so again I think just simply talking about it sometimes people can't get a perspective can they yeah and again when you're feeling emotional about something we we know and I'm often talking about it on this show you won't see the logic you won't see the the truth in it and and that's Mm. where the mind does make up a load of things I love that analogy you know oh uh, maybe nobody else applied (laughs) <laughs> That's chances of that are zero, aren't they? You got the job because you, you deserved it or you are what they're looking yeah. for. I uh, I had somebody with a similar conversation I, and I, I just remember saying to him, do you really think they'd put you in charge of the as a finance director if you didn't really know what you were doing with like, you know, a three million pound budget? Do you really think that, some you know, they do that? And there was like this silence and he went, mm suppose not. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's an interesting strategy, isn't it, that we can offer for, for anyone who is who does identify with this is fact from feeling. So it, often when we do mention it to somebody else, they will ask a question that will help you identify the truth. Or you can do that yourself. You know, sometimes it's just actually writing down that thought and then looking at it. What's the fact in here? What's yeah. the against the feeling? Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, I love that strategy, Alison, the writing it down and um, and I, you know, write it down and then read it back and then and ask yourself, is that true? What are you assuming here? Where's the evidence? If we were in a, a you know, a court of law, where's the evidence? And you can kind of it's kind of funny, isn't it? You, they read they get to li- number five and then you get, they go, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so there's always evidence, isn't there? So. Definitely. So really thinking about what it is that you're thinking or you're saying to yourself and then find some fact. Is there any evidence to say that that is true? Because the chances are yeah. it won't be. And yeah. I think just being able to get out of your head and, and out of that feeling that you've got or that thing that you've made up is yeah, so absolutely. important. I think also another great strategy I use is, is, is as a way to get perspective is that uh, remember it almost like creating a little character for your imposter syndrome so it absolutely separates you from you and a a really great way to do that is use your own name 
so come on Denise yeah. <laughs> like and uh so what you know what would you what would you do here and actually you know give your imposter syndrome a name so what does it need right now generally it's coming from a place of fear um and what does it what do you need to take care of it so um and it's just a great little way isn't it to separate that out from you Definitely. I love that. And I think something else that springs to my mind is if that voice isn't even yours. So while you can be talking to Denise and saying, come on, is this true? Maybe worth checking whose voice it is, because I know for me, some of my imposter used to not be my voice at all. It was definitely somebody else who was a doubter of mine who would put me down and say, you know, you're not good enough. And actually that voice, some of those things that I was thinking they weren't even anything to do with me. They were definitely things that have been said to me in the past. Absolutely. I worked with someone who um, her imposter syndrome had started at school, really. She was quite um, very intelligent, very quiet. So, so, And actually that was perceived. She was told that she wasn't very confident and she was absolutely confident, but she was just quiet. But actually had grown up with that. So that manifested into some sort of monster. And um, and she used to sing in a choir. And I, I, I remember saying, so when you're on the stage in front of like, you know, 3000 people, which part of you doesn't feel successful? Wow. And um, and then actually being able to, oh, gosh, actually, I know where that's this has come from now. So, um, again, there's the evidence, isn't it? Um, and, and we bring stuff, we bring stuff with us on our journey, don't we, from our kind of younger younger years into our more mature we do and and i think just identifying who is it how old do you feel when you're feeling and thinking this (laughs) thing is another good question to ask yourself yeah love that absolutely love it it's kind of like the younger self isn't it somewhere i love that yeah and it's a great and that's another great strategy isn't it to help you get perspective actually and how old are you now (laughs) yeah because you're just challenging aren't you in the moment you're just challenging this feeling this this feeling that an imposter is in your midst right now because that imposter is going to be telling you things like you're going to get found out. Somebody's going to realize that you're not good enough. Somebody's going to tell you that how on earth did you get here? Mm. And and this these thoughts, we can start to maybe write them down, see whose voice it is, see how old you feel. And as you say, if you can identify a time in your life, then it's like, oh, okay. Mm. That's why that's there. Yeah, I think a lot of um, another great strategy, and I think, and this is something certainly, I think this has really personally helped me over the last uh, number of years is uh, being more self compassionate. Like, you know, would you talk to your best friend like that? Yeah. <laughs> would you would- really? You wouldn't. You wouldn't have any friend. You know, you, yeah. like it's kind of. So, what is it that? Um, what is it that? makes us talk to ourselves like that like that really harsh critic voice um so what would be a more compassionate voice like particularly when you're in struggle um and sometimes you know things happen don't they and we don't really have any control over we have get a disappointment in our work life and then we think oh well yeah I'm not good enough and actually it's how we process those things and um and move through them yeah I love that it's so important the, the self-care, the sort of be kinder to yourself, because I think that plays out in just so many scenarios for people when they're when it's going a bit wrong or a bit tough and they forget yeah. that actually they just need to think about that. But I think something that I've been talking to somebody about recently, a client of mine, and she remembers very young and a school situation and she was left out of a friendship group and for her pushing herself, working so, so hard for fear of that happening again. Mm. And here she is now as a young woman who still can feel this old feeling of being young and being left out with her friends and terrified of it happening again. So then she overcomplicates things, overthinks things, creates the scenarios for herself that are, yeah, not kind to herself whatsoever. Mm. Uh, and I am um, it's it, but you know I work a lot um I do a lot of work in the academic world and um you know hugely successful people got 
you know, worked really, really hard. So real high achievers from a very young age. And when we've done some coaching, really kind of dug underneath, it's been very much around a fear of if I stop, if I stop working so hard, I'm not going to be successful. And uh, and actually, really challenging that and going, you know, have you have you ever not been, have you never failed? Well, no, I haven't failed. Yeah. So it's actually, you know, what does enough look like? Mm. I think all of that as well. It's that. But as you say, good enough, how can you allow something, can you allow something to go out that's, you know, maybe isn't as perfect as you wanted it to be? And what might that feel like if you could do that? I think acknowledging that's enough, that's good enough, um, or acknowledging the success of however far you've got it, I think is another great strategy. Yeah. And actually, the other what, one of my rules of life is that sometimes we're going to make a mistake. <laughs> yeah. I always think of I think it's a, it's not just my saying, but it's definitely one I live by is, you know, it's just information. If it hasn't worked mm-hmm. out, you've just got more information. You yeah. just know now a bit more about that or, you know, how. how and I think the other thing that people often find themselves doing again, it, it plays into this idea that you're on your own is that you make up that somebody else is going to think like you about your work, is going to think it's not good enough, think it's not perfect enough, think it's not good, brilliant enough. And actually, nine times out of ten, most people are going to be like, that's brilliant, well done. Yeah. So we feel alone with it, don't we? We, And uh, having the courage to say, do you know what, I'm going to send it and get some feedback is so much more useful because most people are going to say it's just what we wanted. Yeah. And the other thing as well, I think, again, if we if imposter syndrome tends to be our friend, we're not very good at taking in compliments. Mm, I always say compliments are like a gift. Oh, no, that we we bat it off. Oh, no. Well, you know, even like the simple thing about, oh, you look nice in that dress. Oh, this old thing. I got it from, you know, it's and I always say another little technique is just say thank you even if it's really uncomfortable if someone was giving you a gift you wouldn't give it back or throw it back would you so I actually think that really helps build that muscle of self-worth really that I am good enough so and it can just feel a bit uncomfortable but but it is a gift as you said it's it is strengthening your your self-worth muscle your confidence muscle just to being able to say if somebody says that's really good just be able to say Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, I know lots of people, as I'm sure you do, who find that hard. But once you do it, then it gets easier and it and then you're building up internally that self-confidence. Yeah, absolutely. I think something else that I see as a strategy that works quite well in these kind of situations is saying yes to things. Because if you are somebody who does lots of what if thinking, <laughs> worries about Is it going to be the right decision? Is it the right, you know, overthinking, worried that it's not going to be perfect, worried that you don't know how to do something, which as we said at the beginning, the chances are you're going to feel a bit worried because it's new. But actually just having the courage to say yes to opportunities is a way of coping with imposter syndrome. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, yeah, I always say, say yes and then work out the how later, even if you're mildly terrified. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the thing, isn't it? We fear that emotional response of fear. We fear yeah. being frightened, don't we? We fear being worried about something. And yet it's perfectly kind of normal and yeah. it's part of our makeup, really. Yeah. Well, you know this more than more than anyone about going out your comfort zone. I mean, of all the people I know, you're the first one to say, yes, I'll have a go at that and not done stuff before. I just, just had four days in Iceland and spent most of the time mildly terrified on a snowmobile or snorkeling. But actually, I'm not, I am a bit of a wuss. Mm. Um, and it was really interesting what that did for my confidence. And actually, um, actually, I can't, you know, was I the best at it? No, but I had to go. And actually, it was so empowering to do that um, because I could have been quite easily talked out of it. So it, um, it was another friend who'd had kind of booked before I'd kind of said yes. And she said, well, I just thought you'd do that anyway. So I was like, oh, okay. So 
And um, and that's opened the door to other things that I've thought, as you absolutely said. So just say yes. Just do just it. Have a go. Just do it. What's the worst thing that can happen? So. Exactly. Right. Brilliant. So let's have a little summary of our signs uh, that we've kind of identified today. So I think one of the really good things that you said, Denise, was that people often just think that they got lucky, you know, that, that their success is just because they got lucky. They didn't actually do anything to to achieve that. So I think that's the first thing we can highlight. Um, definitely they're convinced that they're not good enough or it's not good enough. That's another good point. Something else you said, Denise, I think, which is great, is it's quite hard to accept praise. So again, if we're going to flip it into a strategy, being able to say thank you when someone says something nice. Um, Apologising. Yeah, that's another one, isn't it? Yeah. Just saying sorry all the time (laughs) when you don't need to unnecessarily. We know that sometimes it's the standard that you set yourself is so high that you you almost can't achieve it, so that you are going to almost fulfil your own doubt and fear because the standard you've set is way up here. And I think the last one for me is is remembering that that fear of failure can be so paralysing, it'll stop you moving forward. Yeah, I think uh, for me it's know that you're good enough, right, simply as you are. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. Um just know that you're good enough. Definitely. I mean, that's a summary for so many challenges that we as humans have, isn't it? Is to just find a way, find the how for you for for being able to do that. And to do that, we need to do things like we've said, be kinder to yourself, acknowledge your successes, get that fact and feeling mm. with, with some of these thoughts. Always remembering that you're not alone. There's so many people and just say yes. And I love your I love your story. And hopefully somebody else. I, I've recently said yes to something that's going to be pushing me out of my comfort zone. So yeah, if you can, it, uh, it you, your brain might be screaming at you saying, don't do it, don't do it. Your imposter could be saying you can't, but it's just maybe jotting it down, challenge it, talk to somebody else about it. And then let's see if we can make it just less than ever so slightly. And then slowly but surely, we know that you then it lessens so much that it doesn't become a thing. Absolutely. Build your muscle. Build, Build your resilience your muscle. muscle. Yeah. Well, I always think it's like going to the gym, isn't it? You know, you, yeah. we have to go regularly. We have to go repetitively. We've got to do all sorts of exercises to get fit. It's no different, is it? No. Now you're, now you're push, punishing me now. I'm like going, I haven't been for two weeks. So maybe I, I've just started <laughs> doing some um, some. Sh- workouts and you know when you kind of go in I haven't quite got into the habit yet so mm. um so I might go tonight now you've shamed me into it <laughs> <laughs> brilliant oh thank you so much for coming and sharing your wisdom with me and having this brilliant conversation I know it's going to help people but before we go tell everyone where they can find you uh well you can find me on my website which is uh uk, and that's probably the easiest way um, and there's a little contact email so take a look on the site and uh, and if not they can contact me through you so exactly and we'll put some of your details in the show notes anyways put some of your socials and things like that so if anyone wants to check Denise out please do thank you very much thank you so much for your time Denise today I knew that this topic was best served with someone like you thank you And I'm excited to say that in next week's episode, we are going to be talking about the power of the breath and how it affects your sleep. It's an absolutely fascinating interview. And my special guest is Joel Jensen. So I can't wait to share that with you. Thank you for listening and sharing in this episode of Mental Wealth. Remember, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcast. My last question to you is what is the one small thing that you can take action on from this episode? Message me on Instagram or through our website with questions you'd like me to explore. You'll find the links in the show notes. I'll be back with more tools and tips to make sense of your mind in the next episode. In the meantime, be kind to yourself. Bye for now. Thank you.